What hasn't been said about Parashat Shmini, Nadav and Avihu, offering a fire and fire, and Aharon's silence? I want to pose two possibilities. One actually is first the teaching of the Rav Levi Yitzchak Berdichev, who claims that they weren't punished. Imagine deep sea fish surfacing, they'll explode, not as a punishment, but they can't be contained in shallow water. Shallow fish going down, they'll explode. There's no way they can't exist. It's not a punishment. If you're a deep sea or a shallow water, you can't mix and mingle. In the realm of spirit, the same as well. So for Rebbe Yitzchak, it's not a punishment. It's the reality of being burnt out, like the orchard, like the pardes, being burnt out. Now what are we going to do? That's the question. Aharon's silence. Why was he silent? I don't actually believe that it has to do with accepting God's decree. I want to pose a different reading. You don't have to agree with me. I ask of you to embrace it for a moment, to listen, to think about it. One possibility is to think about Aaron's silence because he's actually really proud of his sons. They had a moment that they knew that they could be face to face with God. And they seized the moment and they took it and they ran in. How could you not? They would say. Rav Kuk had that moment and he held back. But that's another story for another time. They had a moment and they ran into the Holy of Holies to die in God's presence. And he is so proud of his sons that didn't hesitate and they took that moment. So his silence is because he's proud, maybe jealous. He has to stay back, assume responsibilities, maybe a little jealous, maybe proud. And maybe possibly also because as a parent, he didn't protect them. He didn't teach them that that is true, that there are moments like that. The price though for those moments, so high, so high. And maybe perhaps he was sorry for a moment that he didn't teach them to hold back so he could have had them for yet another moment. Shabbat Shalom.